We have one more Learn to Talk for you today. And so we're going to wrap up this session as we get ready to go to cohorts. We'll have a little bit after this, but I'd like to invite for our last Learn to Talk for today, Mr. Sheldon Bradshaw. Woohoo! Uh, you have the. Uh, Jeff, 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 click it, please. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. The moon. It's amazing how this has become part of our discussion about educational change. If you take a look at a term that's been used in industry and education lately, moonshot thinking, it's becoming pretty popular. For those of you who aren't aware, this is the idea that we throw out our existing ways of thinking. We come up with radical solutions, things that we wouldn't have thought possible, and that's the only way that we're going to solve some of our big, meaty problems. The thought is that if we're using incremental change, we're going to get to a point, we get to a big wall where we can't get over that wall. We need some really creative moonshots to get us over to where we want to be. This isn't really a new idea. If we look back 100 years, back to Henry Ford, or a little more recently, into some of our learning too. The idea of the moonshot has been put out there as this is what's going to save us. There's an entire company built around this, Google's X Labs. The only goal of that company is to develop and launch moonshots. If you listen to some of the talks put up by Astro Teller, the head of Google's X Labs, he does something with his audience, and I'm going to try that with this with you right now, so let's see how this goes. I'm going to give you a question, and there's two possible answers to this, option A and option B. Your only job? is to answer honestly and choose one of these options. Okay, hopefully this will show us a little bit about what moonshot thinking is about. So fossil fuels, we need them, but we know they're a disaster. We're going to run out of them and they're terrible for the environment. So being the smart people that you are, you can choose option A. You get to work on something that will develop uh, a way of burning fossil fuels that's 15% more efficient and a 100% chance of success. You will not fail. Or option B, you can work on the project that gets rid of fossil fuels, comes up with a new energy source, completely carbon neutral, completely clean, affordable, but you've only got a 5% chance of success. So, see if I can see past these lights out here. Who would choose option A? Option B? <laughs> now, look around the room right now. There's our moonshot thinkers. Most of you, moonshot thinkers, this is great. So why are we still struggling with the same problems in education that we've had for the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years? We're all moonshot thinkers. Let's try a different question then. When you leave this conference and you go back to work on Monday, you'll get a 10% salary increase for doing absolutely nothing. Everything else is exactly the same. Or, it's wishful thinking, I know, Option B, you take all of your assets, money, property, investments, whatever you happen to have, and you put that down on the table for the chance of your dream existence. Money, don't have to worry about retirement anymore. Work in your perfect job, or not work if that's your perfect job, but you've only got a 5% chance of success. Now, remember what you've bet on this and what happens if you get it wrong. So, who's choosing option A? Option B, there's always one. <laughs> there's always one. Okay. Shoot for the stars, or shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. It's great for a, a greeting card, but in reality, if you miss the moon, you're going to end up dying alone in the cold <laughs> blackness of space. Okay. That's because moonshots fail. They fail spectacularly. They're designed to fail more than they succeed. Take a look at the poster child for moonshot thinking. His is an existence that I don't want. So why are we going down this road? Why is a moonshot going to be our savior? We should just give up, forget about moonshot thinking. That's it. We're done. But I'm not sure I can live with this either. But here's the good news. We don't necessarily need the moonshot just yet. And that's because of everyone in this room. We're teachers, and teachers are innovators. 
I think more than any other industry, teachers innovate. Every day when we go in, we find authentic need. We come up with a plan, we make a change, we test something. If it doesn't work, we try something else. That's the definition of design thinking. We have this. So, what's the problem? The problem is, we haven't taken a page out of industry's book. We share. We're great at sharing. We could probably share a little bit more, but that's a topic for another day. But when we share, we say, here's this great idea. You can use it if you like. Industry doesn't share that way. Industry markets. They advocate. They push. We have this great thing, and you want it. Whether you want it or not, or whether you agree with the message, you've heard their message. Where's our advocacy and the ideas that we're pushing for? To give you a few examples of our colleagues who are doing this, the Easy App Company, Easy Blog, three teachers who were really struggling with how can they get their youngest learners to post their blog content to an authentic global audience. Maybe a little more popular one, a guy helping his cousin with her homework, now translated to 65 languages. Or even where we are today, learning too. Four teachers who decided there has to be a better way for us to all learn together. None of these started as the moonshot. But what they did start with, I think, can be best expressed by one of my heroes, Big Weld. See a need, fill a need. And then we have to advocate for it. The wall is still there. That hasn't gone away. We will still eventually need a moonshot. But the closer we can all get to this wall, the faster we can all get to this wall brings us the possibility of working together to maybe get over that wall. So my challenge for you over these next three days, you've got three things to do. Look out ahead. What is your wall? What's the thing that you need to get over? What's the thing that you need to get over in your school? The second thing, who are you going to support on that journey? And the third thing, what is that thing that you're good at, that you're passionate about, that thing that you want to passionately advocate for? Because while we still need the moonshot, the closer we can get together, we become the scaffolding, and it brings that moon just a little bit closer. Thank you.